Hello, everyone, and welcome to our focus topic of the week, which is qubits. This week, we're going to be taking a look at how this bid works. And we're going to start right off with this hand. We've opened one spade. Our West player has overcalled two hearts, and our partner has raised to three hearts. This should always look a little weird to you, right? Partners bidding the opponent's suit. They can't possibly want to play in hearts, considering that West has shown a good five-card heart suit. In fact, this bid means something totally different, and it's completely standard. This is not part of some sort of conventional agreement with partner. This is the way bidding should work. When we bid the opponent's suit after our partner has opened or overcalled, we're showing support for their suit and at least an invitational hand. So the requirements here are just 10 plus points. And because we've shown five spades, our partner just needs three or more spades. It's a great way to conserve bidding room during the auction while showing your hand in a very specific way. When we're responding to our partner's qubit, as we are on this hand, we're going to ask ourselves, based on what partner has shown us, do we have enough points for game? Here with partner only showing us 10 points, the most we can get to is about 14 if we count our shortness in clubs. So we essentially have a balanced hand. We don't have enough for game just yet, but partner will always get another bid in this scenario. So we can communicate our balance minimum by bidding three spades. Again, we don't have enough for game. And our partner correctly passes with their minimum, and we stay at our appropriate level of three spades. Let's take a look at a few more examples. So here our partner's opening the bidding, one spade. Our East player has overcalled two hearts, so how do we show our hand? We could just bid two spades, but the cutoff for that is about six to nine points. And we're just a little bit above that. Right? Our hand is very balanced, so we can't be too happy about that, but looks like all of our cards should be working for us. So we're going to make our cue bid to show 10 plus points and support for our partner's suit. And here our partner has said, okay, based upon the fact that you have support in 10 plus, we should have enough for game. So they went ahead and bid it. So let's take a look. Very nice contract for us. We should do quite well here. Probably make exactly four, losing two diamonds in one spade. Similar scenario on this hand. Our partner opens one spade. East bids two clubs. We have a very good hand in support for spades, and we're going to communicate that by making our qubit. 10 plus points, three or more spades, right? We have at least an invitational hand. We have a fit. And partner, once again, bids four spades, and we can see that they certainly have their bid. Right? As long as we communicated the strength of our hand correctly, they know that we have enough points for game. Let's take a look at this from a couple of different seats here. Now it's our turn to open the bidding. We bid one spade. West as expected overcalls two diamonds and north cubits. So what do you think about this hand? Do we have enough for game opposite our partner's 10 points? And the answer should be a pretty clear yes. We have what equates to about a 16 count. And if partner has their bid, which should show 10 plus, we certainly have enough for game. And this is exactly how we're going to communicate it. And again, another very good game that we've arrived at. Here we're opening one spade once again. And... As predicted, partner has Q bid to show 10 plus points and three or more spades. And in this scenario, we're not quite there, right? We have three small clubs, which can't be that good. And our spade suit is not the best. Uh, some people who are a little more aggressive might decide to bid four spades with a hand like this anyway. However, what you really want to do in these situations is you want to bring partner at least somewhat into the decision-making process when your hands are marginal. So just because we bid three spades does not necessarily mean that the auction's going to end. Partner can always continue to game with a better hand than just 10. 
So with hands like this, it's okay to just bid three spades and see what happens. And we can see partner had a pretty minimum hand for their cue bid. They had maybe a little bit extra, but again, they decided to sell out for three spades as well. And it looks like we're both bidding to the appropriate level in this spot. Now let's take a look at when the opponents open the bidding. This doesn't change the cue bid whatsoever. It just looks a little bit different. Right. West has now opened the bidding one spade, and our partner has bid two hearts. So the qubit means exactly the same in this situation as it would if we opened the bidding. So to show our good 10 or more points and support for our partner's suit, we're going to bid the opponent's suit, two spades. Here is an interesting bid by the robot. They are communicating that based upon our qubit, they have some interest in playing higher than game. Uh, this three spade bid should be a control bid. And as we see, we can kind of ask the robot what they're trying to do here. And what they've told us is they don't have either control in clubs or diamonds, but they have a control in the spade suit. With our very balanced minimum here, it's probably not in our best interest to cooperate with partner. So we're just going to bid our four hearts and we're going to see what they do. Here, the robot's been, I would say, a tad aggressive with their hand considering they have two small spades and not the best hand to potentially be playing slam opposite partner's cue bid, but we'll give them points for just an aggressive stance on this hand. Uh, obviously, we've ended in the appropriate contract. We're not likely to make more than... Here we have a, a special circumstance to take a look at. Our auction has started with our partner opening one spade. And it's continued with East directly qubiting their spade suit. And this is the Michaels qubit. This should look familiar to some of you. And this shows that East has a five-card heart suit and five of a minor. So how would we qubit in this situation? The, the answer is we want to figure out what suit we know East has and, and bid that suit. Right? And in this auction, the two spade bid shows five hearts and five of an unspecified minor. So hearts is the suit we know East has. So in order to show our qubit, our 10 or more points and support for spades, we need to bid a suit that we know they have. And when I say we, I mean both our hand and our partner's hand need to know what suits East is showing. If you're ever curious about this and you're not sure what this bid might mean at the table, you can ask your opponents at this point, right? Now you both get to hear the explanation of what this bid means. So now when we make our cue bid of three hearts, we know it's not natural, right? We know it's a qubit of the opponent's suit. So this is a very interesting situation. We essentially have two consecutive qubits. East has qubit two spades, which is our suit. And we have bid their suit to show that we have a supporting hand and at least invitational values. So let's pass this out and see how we did. Interesting contract. We can make this contract, but it might not be the easiest to make. However, we've gotten to a re reasonably appropriate level with a lot of chances to make it. It's an interesting auction that we've had here, and it will come up occasionally, so be on the lookout for this. Remember, a qubit is almost always when we're bidding a suit that the opponent has bid in front of us. And in this case, it's not much different. Our opponent has essentially bid hearts in front of us. We just have to take that extra logical step. In fact, both sides of the pair need to take that extra logical step and know that this three heart bid can't be natural because East has already shown a five card heart suit, right? So this must be that support showing Q bid for our side. You want to practice these bids live. We have two focus duplicate games this coming Thursday, which will be March 3rd. One is in the morning, 945 at Cavendish. We have bagels and coffee for you there. And this Thursday night, there's a special price for our Thursday evening focus game at the Aces Bridge Club. 
That's on uh, West 54th Street. $10 entry fee for the evening game this week. So join us for our practice sessions in New York. We also have an online bidding practice session, which we're going to cover this topic again with. This is going to be March 22nd, which is a Tuesday evening at 630. So uh, register for that uh, in advance if you can, because space is limited. So till next week, enjoy Happy Bridge, and we'll see you next time. Take care.